Father, I pray that, oh God, as we share this morning, as your Holy Spirit is going to use myself as a microphone in your hand, oh God, that you speak, oh Lord God, to the hearts of each and everyone that is in this house, oh God. Father, I believe that we are good grounds. I believe that there are good seeds that are falling in beautiful, fertile grounds that are going to be bearing fruits for the kingdom of heaven. So this morning, oh God, we give you the glory and honor which is due unto your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about authority and power. Matthew 28, verse 18. Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Luke 24, 47. It was also written that this message would be proclaimed in the authority of his name to all the nations. Be beginning in Jerusalem, there is forgiveness of sin for all who repent. Today, as I'm sharing with you about authority and power, I want us to understand that there is a difference between authority and power because God has different prospects or different points regarding these two issues. Authority, the word authority is defined as the power or the right to give orders, make decisions, and enforce obedience. Or the other definition for it is the right to act in a specified way delegate from one person or organization to another. Authority gives us the right to speak things, to do things, to enforce things, to delegate things, and to organize things. Authority is like a policeman, a police officer, someone that has a uniform that is being given by the government. The government gives them a uniform, they give them a badge, and that represents their authority. They can come stand in the middle of the street and put their hand up and stop you without any cause, and they have that right to do it. And you cannot ask them why you're stopping me or you telling me to stop. Because that uniform that they're wearing, that badge that they're having on their chest, is authority and represents authority. And we become respectful to that authority regardless what we think or we want to do. Jesus came and said the same manners. He says, I've been given authority both in heaven and earth. I have the full authority. I can do what I please to do because I am God himself. And I, I can do whatever I, it pleases me. And he says, I'm going to give you the same authority. Now, just because a police officer or because a man or woman at the border has a, uh, has a uniform on and has an authority, has a badge on their, on their chest, doesn't mean that everybody is going to respect that person. It doesn't mean just because you have your, your authority, people, people are always going to stop for that policeman. We've seen police chases on, 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 uh, on TV. We see people are car, police chasing a vehicle for hours and hours and hours. We see people cursing at police officers. We see people cursing at po officiating. So we, feel, we see that people even uh, in, in some sports, in hockey or uh, football or basketball or soccer, even though the, the referee is wearing the, the, the sign of authority, wearing the zebra his shirts on and saying, I am representing the league and I'm representing the law the rules and regulation of this game and still the players are going after the referee and screaming and shouting at the referee say I don't care what kind of authority you are I will not respect you this morning we just need more than authority in our life we need power we need to recognize that God has more than authority for our lives you see we have authority in the name of Jesus but we don't have power. And we need that power. You will understand in a little while where I'm going with this. 
Luke chapter 24, verse 49, reads the following. And now I will send the Holy Spirit, just as my father promised. But stay here in the city until the Holy Spirit comes and fills you with power from heaven. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, through Judea and Samaria, and the ends of the earth. You see, what makes that police officer so powerful? What makes that, uh, the, the man and the woman at the border, the border guard, so powerful? It's not only that they have authority, not that they only have a badge on their chest that the government gave them, but they have something called a gun. They're packing heat. They're packing power. They're saying, you know what? There will come a time that you will disrespect my authority. There will come a time that you will not listen what I have to, tell, to have to tell you. And there is a time that I have to use force on you. I have to take my gun out. I have to take my baton out. I have to for, use force on you to emphasize that I am the power at the end of the day. Whether you like it or not, I am the power. And I am more consumed with the things of the world than the things of the kingdom of God. They were more consumed. When is the end coming, God? When is Jerusalem going to be restored? When is that kingdom is going to take place? When is your second coming happening? And Jesus said to them, he says, that authority belongs to my father. Nobody knows about that at point in time. But what you should be really concerned about, you should be concerned about to receive the Holy Spirit. Because without him, you are powerless. He will not be, you are not allowed to do anything, and you are not able to achieve anything in your life. That is why the Holy Spirit is our gun. The Holy Spirit is our power, is our firepower, is our authority that we can walk in. I want to, I wanna, before I go any further, I have to share some Bible stories with you because I, wanna, I, want you, I don't want you to think that this pastor is talking from knowledge of himself or he's talking something that is not in the text. It is in the text, in the, in the book of Acts chapter 19. Verse 1 and 6, Apostle Paul talks about it. He says, while Apollos was in Corinthians, Corinth, and Paul traveled through the interior regions until he reached Ephesus on the coast where he found several believers. Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? The question was, again, did you receive the Holy Spirit? That wasn't, that wasn't a, an optional choice. Oh, I want to receive the Holy Spirit or I don't want to. It wasn't an option. He says, do you believe? Okay, the process of believing means the next step is that you shall receive the, the, the Holy Spirit. And they, they answered him. They said, no, we haven't even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Sadly, this is not the problem that the book of Acts, the church in Ephesus had. This is a problem that we're having today in the churches. Many churches don't even talk about the Holy Ghost anymore. They do not emphasize on the power of the Holy Spirit. They don't want to talk about the power of the Holy Spirit. All they want to talk about is about you do the good works and you do the good deeds and the rest is uh, uh, God will take care of it. We, are, we were preaching more about the deeds than the, the do's than, than, than telling that you need to be obedient to the Holy Spirit and hear Him. They didn't even hear about the Holy Spirit. Some of the churches today that we're dealing with, they do not even accept the Holy Spirit part of their services. If somebody is speaking in unknown tongues, they will tell them to shut down and shut up and get out. They said that is unruly. That's not how God operates. God doesn't speak in other tongues that will cause people to be confused. But this is what the apostle is telling us. He says, then, what baptism did you experience? He asked. And they replied, the baptism of John. And Paul said, John baptized called for repentance from sin, but John himself told the people to believe in the one who would come later, meaning Jesus. As soon as they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then when Paul laid his hand on them, and here's the thing, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they spoke in other tongues and prophesied. Now, this is not me talking. This is the text. This is the word of God. Jesus 
told his disciples, don't go anywhere until you're baptized in the Holy Ghost. John the Baptist says, the one that cometh after me will baptize you with fire. Apostle Paul is telling them, listen church, the baptism of water was for your sins, for remembrance of your sins. It was an action towards the world. You tell the world, I give my life to Jesus, and now I'm saved, and you got water baptized. But that doesn't fill you up with the Holy Ghost. And there's teachings out there that says the moment that you get saved, you got the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. I understand that, but that doesn't mean that you have the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Because Apostle Paul was telling them, he says, if you had it, if you truly had it, here's what's supposed to take place. There should be an evidence, not only bearing fruits, but there should be evidence of speaking in other tongues. That's what happened. Apostle Peter preached the same sermon on the day of Pentecost. He mentioned to them the same thing. He says to them that once you repented and you got baptized in the name of the Lord, the next step that you need to do is seek the free gift of the Holy Spirit. And we're preparing our way. We're going to the day of Pentecost. We're going to celebrate Pentecost. But here's the thing that we have to understand, that Pentecost wasn't only one day. Pentecost is every day. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit took place on the day of Pentecost as a significant point that we need Him as the power of God's glory in our lives. And here's the apostle being straightforward with the Ephesus. He says, folks, you need the Holy Ghost. Folks, you need the power of Holy Ghost. You need to know how, how He operates. You need to know how He acts. Church, I don't know where you are with God. And I know sometimes this sounds arrogant. This might sound uh, very forceful. But I'm here to tell you, if you are not having the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you don't have any power. If there is, you don't have the evidence in speaking other tongues, you don't have any power. You, might, you, have a, you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, that is true. You have authority in Jesus Christ, that is true. But you don't have any power. Because the power of, the God, of God only comes through the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the one that is your firepower to fight against the rulers and the authorities of this world. You're dealing with the sins of your life, you're dealing with struggles of your life, is because we do not have the power of the Holy Spirit. Here is the fact. The Bible tells us we do not fight and wrestle against flesh and blood, and the, but we're fighting against the principalities and the authorities of this world. We're fighting against demons. We're fighting against, we're fighting against the devil who is more powerful than ourselves. And we're trying to tell the devil and the demons, oh, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you. They're saying, what kind of power do you have? I have more than you. We sing that song, hey, you know what, greater is he who is in me. Then who is in this world? The, the devil is like a lion, roaring like a lion to deceive whoever he wants to deceive. But greater is he in me. Who is that greater is in you? Not just the authority. The coat of the, the, uh, Jesus Christ is the coat. The authority that is put on you is the clothing. When you get saved, you've been clothed with God's righteousness. But you're missing the power, the, the, the grenade, the, the, the whatever you want to look at, the tank or the bomb, whatever you need to explode the plans and the purposes of demons held against you. You need that power. And you're, you're missing it. And we're shying away from it as a church today. That is why the church of the living God is failing this world because we are powerless. We're going to the war against the principalities and the authorities of this world with what? With our bare hand. We're going with bows and error while they're coming with, against us with atomic bombs. Demons have atom bombs while we have bows and arrows. Guess who's winning? I don't need to tell you. You are smart enough. He's winning. That's why we see people are going to hell, people are entertaining their flesh, people are rejoicing in the ways that they are they're rejoicing. People are more consumed about doing better in their own self than they are more consumed about God's kingdom. People don't even want to go to church anymore because they do not see the power of God in his house. We are responsible as the children of God to manifest the power and the glory of God through the evidence of the Holy Spirit. One translation tells us, he, Jesus said, when Jesus told them, he says that you shall be filled with dunamis power. Now, dunamis power means exploding power. It's a power that will explode. And then in the text, after what he did in the book of Ephesus, in the church of Ephesus, 
the Apostle Paul continued preaching and teaching and doing all the things that he was doing. And in verse, 9, uh, in verse 11 to 17, Acts 19, verse 11 to 17, reads the following, God gave Paul the power to perform unusual miracles. Mark that in your Bible. God gave Paul the power to perform unusual miracles. You know why the world is so deceived today? They are so deceived because they see miracles from demon-possessed people, but they don't see power and miracles done by man and woman of God. They see people like uh, Chris Angel coming and putting things through his finger and veins and walking on water and so forth, and they're mesmerized by that. Oh, wow, look at him. He's walking on water. Oh, let's worship Chris Angel or whatever his name is or people like him. People who, have, who are tapped into demonic forces, they're doing crazy things. And people, they're, they're telling for, for telling people's future or telling about the past. And people say, wow, look at that. But yet that person is demonic. And God is saying, we as a church are supposed to do unusual miracles. He told us that we shall do greater miracles, we shall do greater works than he did on this earth. Church, we need to see some dead rise, some deaf hearing, some blind seeing, and some mute talking one more time. We need to see some crippled standing up and some people to, to do miraculous things in their life. Because the Bible tells me here, continue reading, it says, When the handkerchief or aprons that had merely touched... Now, here's what the, the example. It, it kind of just merely, it didn't even touch Apostle Paul properly. It kind of breathed him. It kind of went past him. He says, even that, even those were used to do what? That to place it on sick people and they were be healed of their diseases. And evil spirits were expelled. Does any part of your garments even touching somebody today, healing someone? Nevertheless, your hand, laying hands on them. That's the handkerchief that was in your pocket. Just because it was dropped on the ground and a sick person or a demon-possessed person picked up that handkerchief or that piece of clothing where evil desires, evil spirits departed them. But here's the text that is telling us when you walk in the power of the Holy Spirit, in the boldness of His glory, even the garments, even the garments that touch your skin, barely touch your skin, shall expel and heal diseases and call these evil spirits to get out. Now a group of Jews was traveling from town to town casting evil spirits. And I rephrase this. A group of uh, religious people, people who saw how God was working, saw these things. How Apostle Paul, some anointed man of God, some anointed woman of God that walking in the power of the Holy Ghost was casting uh, demons and healing people. They said, oh, it looks nice. They tried to use the name of the Lord Jesus in their inaction, saying, I command you in the name of Jesus, who Paul preaches to, come out. Seven sons of Sekephia, a leading priest, were doing this. But one time, they tried it, and the evil spirit replied. Stop right there. You see... The religious folks, they come, and we see that happening. They come and stand in front of a man or a woman of God, and things don't happen. And this is, this is reality. Let's, let's talk for real for a second. They come, and they start saying, in the name of Jesus, I de demand you to be healed. In the name of Jesus, I demand you to walk, and nothing happens. And they say, oh, well, it wasn't their time. It wasn't their season. Well, hold on. If it, was their time or not, if it wasn't their time or season, why did you even say something? Because if you knew what the Holy Spirit has to say unto you, you would be like Paul and Barnabas while you were walking. You see, this is the story about the man at the pearly gates. The man at the pearly gates, Paul and Barnabas saw him every day when they were walking by him. He was crippled. Jesus even saw him. But because they had the power of the Holy Ghost, they didn't pay him any attention. They knew that it wasn't the day for him to be healed. But the day that he was supposed to be healed, because they were full of the Holy Ghost, they knew today is his day. When the man at the pearly gates asked them for gold and silver, that's what they said to him gold and silver we do not have to give unto you but we got the Holy Ghost rise up in the name of Jesus and the man rise up at once at that time because that day was his day that day they knew that it was his day of salvation that day was the day of his healing they did not do it the day before they didn't do it the day after they knew exactly the days and, 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 and religious folks 
uh, church folks today using the name of Jesus, they're thinking they have authority in the name of Jesus, but do not have the power. The Bible even describes to us. He says that they have a form of godliness, but they deny the power. <laughs> they deny the power. The Holy Ghost is the power. You can see my sermon later. I have nothing like this written here. It's all scriptures. The Lord didn't allow me to write one word. He says, open your mouth and I shall fill it. So I'm just reading scriptures and speaking as the Lord is saying. Nothing happens. Nothing takes place. No healings takes place. No move of God is happening. We don't see miracles taking place. I thank God for his grace and for his mercy that God hasn't allowed this to happen to us. But trust me, the evil spirits are looking the same way that they looked at these two brothers, these seven brothers. They finally had it with these guys. They said, you know what? Enough is enough. You keep on telling us, come in the name of Jesus that Paul preaches. He said, they said, I know Jesus. And I know Paul. But who are you? The demons and the principalities of this world is looking at us the same way. Jesus we know. The apostles we know. But who are you? Do you have power? We don't think you have power because we don't see the Holy Ghost in you. We are more powerful than you. And then, and then, this, then the man with the evil spirit leaped on them, overpowered them. One man overpowered seven of them. Seven. One to seven. And he attacked them because he was full of uh, demonic powers. And he attacked them with such a violence that they fled from the house naked and battered. The story of what happened spread quickly all through Ephesus to the Jews and Greeks alike. Folks, don't take the grace of God lightly. Just because the demons are not coming attacking you, just because the demons don't come to talk to you the way they talk to these seven brothers, doesn't mean that they're not looking at us and laughing at us. When we are going to, at the, when we come against the principalities and authorities of this world and we say in the name of Jesus and nothing happens, they're looking at us and laughing at us. They say, you're powerless against me. You have nothing on me because I have more power than you do. I can take seven of you at one time. I can tell you right now, right here, and, and I'm being a little bit comical about this. If the devil showed up in this house right now in, in, in the way of a demonic possessed person and doing all sorts of things, how many of us would be really, really standing up and have the authority to rebuke him? And how many of us would be running like crazy because we do not want that person to attack us? How many of us would look at, look at that person and say, you know what, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus, just go on, and that person has to fall and, 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 and fall away? How many times the demons will see you and I and see Christ, authority and power in us. Because when they saw the living Son of God walking on this earth, the demons cried out from afar. Jesus didn't even need to touch them. They said, Son of man, what do you want from us? Leave us alone. Why are you coming after us? And Jesus didn't say anything. He just showed up. <laughs> when you show up in a room, does things change? When you show up in circumstances, does things change? Does people, does demons have say, Oh, darkness has to flee? As we sang this morning, the darkness tries to hide, but the light will expose it. Will sin run away? Hmm. That's the question that we need to ask ourselves. God wants you to have power. He wants you to have the Holy Ghost power. He wants, that's what we are praying. That's what we are fasting. We are fasting and praying. God, we need an outpouring of your spirit one more time. We don't want to flee, fled this world. We don't want to be afraid of this world. We don't want to, you don't want people to tell us what to do and what not to do. As our brother was sharing last night, people, this world is trying to cause us to beg and be beggars to them. We beg and beg and beg and beg. The moment that he did not beg them, the world started begging him. Oh, you wanted the list? Here, please, come get the list. I don't want it anymore. You can take the list that, of names that I wanted from you. No, 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 please come here and get it. But because they saw that he has no need of them any longer. The world sees the authority in, the, in, in, in someone and they recognize, Oh, okay, now that you have authority, I have to be subservient to you. But as long as they feel, as long as the spirit of this world has you by your neck, as long as the spirit of this world has you by your throat, will cause you to do things that they demand. 
it becomes and causes you to be enslaved. As we heard earlier, whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Not in bondage of anything, we have the power of the Holy Ghost. And to finish up that scripture, it says, A solemn fear descended on the city, and the name of the Lord Jesus was greatly honored. Hallelujah. The story of what happened spread quickly all through Ephesus. To the Jews, to the Greeks alike, a solemn fear descended on the city. And the name of the Lord Jesus was greatly honored. The name of Jesus is not honored in our city. The name of Jesus is not honored in our city church. The name of Jesus is not honored in our country church. Because the church is powerless. The church has been bestowed a slave of this world. That's why the world is not honoring the name of Jesus. They're cursing with the name of Jesus. They're F-bombing the name of Jesus. They're using it as a curse word instead of honoring. But there was a fear when they saw that you do not use this name in vain. Then they saw that this name is above all names. That every tongue shall confess and every knee shall bow and say that he is Jesus Christ, the Lord and Messiah of all. Church, I don't know about you. <laughs> But I don't want to see that the name of Jesus is used in vain any longer. I don't want to see the name of our Lord being tossed back and forth. Because the powerless people are walking and using his name in vain. When we are using his name in vain, we are causing the world to accuse him of things that he is not. When we say in the name of Jesus, we rebuke and we heal and so forth, nothing happens. The world is laughing at us. They say, why shall I come to Jesus? But when they see, but when they see, but when they see that we can walk in the authority and power of the Holy Spirit, and even our shadows will heal people. Our shadows will heal and set captives free. Not one word that we need to speak. Salvation will come. That is when we see the fear of the Lord will grasp the whole city and people will not say, Jesus, part of the vocabulary. When they say the name of Jesus, and all will come upon them. The church has even made a mockery of the name of the Lord. I never forget, four or five years ago, we had a man's meeting in a cabin, and our brother shared a message about honoring the name of the Lord. Not using the name of the Lord in vain. And we are using the name of the Lord in vain even today. Jesus is my homie. No, he is your God. He is not your homie. Me and Jesus are homeboys. Me and, me and Jesus are kicking it. No, you are not kicking it with him. He's the glory of the I am. He was born as a virgin and he's risen as the God great I am. You do not use his name in vain. You, when you use the name of Jesus, know that what you comes out of your mouth is power and authority. Do not use him in vain. Have reverence for the name of Jesus. I beg you, if you are not walking in the right manners with God, don't spew the name of Jesus just like it is. Because the world will spew just the way you we are. They're copying us. They're saying they don't, re they don't honor him. Why should we? The name of Jesus needs to be honored. The name of God needs to be honored. We need to have reverence for that name. That reverence only comes when we have the Holy Ghost power. Because the Holy Ghost will not allow us to say those things. The Holy Ghost will shut our mouth when we want to use his name in vain. The Holy Ghost will shut our mouth when we want to say things that is unclean that comes out our mouth. Cleansingness. Clean water and bitter water cannot come from the same source. There's no way. There's no way. That from the same fountain you can have sweet water and bitter water. That's the scripture, that's the text to us. If this tongue of mine can curse and speak all sorts of nonsense, he has no authority to speak holiness and justness and righteousness and has no power. But when he's speaking holiness and justness and glory of God, this tongue will not be able to speak foully. Or bring out bitterness. This tongue will always speak life. 
because the spirit giveth life, but the letter killeth. I was dealing with a situation this morning, and that is it. That people believe that they're walking with the Lord, but yet they're speaking death to other people's life. And they believe that they have arrived to the place of their, in, their, in their life. And I had to deal with it this morning. I had to bring a balance to it. Say, look at the resource of this. Look at the source of this. Would the Spirit of God speak life to what God is doing to you right now? Because you're doing wonderful and great. He would not tell you that you're useless and you're out of, out of my league. But he will say, great, you're in the league of the kingdom of God. Glory unto him. I don't know about you, but I know about myself this morning. That I need more of his Holy Spirit. I need the outpouring of his Holy Spirit over my life. I need the refilling of his Holy Spirit right now even. And tomorrow, and the next day, and the next day, and the next day. Because the anointing is only for that day. His anointings are new every day. We cannot depend on yesterday's anointing for tomorrow. And we cannot depend on tomorrow's anointing for today. Whether you want to stand, whether you want to sit, whatever you want to do, it's up to you. But I want us to go before God and cry out to him one and one. If you don't have the baptism of the Holy Ghost, seek him. Say, God, for the situations that I'm in, for the things I'm believing for you in, in order for me to receive it, for me to achieve it, I need your Holy Ghost power. I don't have the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I don't, know, I don't have it because I know, because I don't, have, I don't have the tongues that you said that I have to be speaking. Because that is the evidence. I've never spoken it before in my life. God, I ask in you that you give me that power, that the fire of the Holy Ghost baptize me in the Holy Ghost, in speaking in other tongues. It's not about the showcase speaking in other tongues. It's not about you coming here and start speaking in tongues and shouting and running around. It's about you knowing that God had a hold and grip of your life finally once forever. It's for you and Him. It's an evidence for you to know. It's an evidence between you and God. Sometimes I have to repent this morning, oh God, God, I just repent on behalf of the body of Jesus Christ because sometimes we want to enhance ourselves, we want to glorify ourselves, we bring people to the altar, God. Father, I pray this morning a repentance prayer for the church, oh God. We want to make a showcase for ourselves by asking people to come and stand in front of us as we lay hands on them and we pray and we say receive and we, we force them to speak in other tongues because we feel that we'll authenticate our ministries, oh God. But Father, I repent this morning because you have not always called us to do it in that way. You have called us to preach the truth. You can baptize people in their homes, in, in the Holy Ghost. You can baptize them at the workplace. You can baptize them in the car. I know what you have done for me, oh God. You have baptized me while I was in my house, oh God. I was praying. I heard myself speaking in other tongues. So you can do it for all of us today, oh God. Father, I pray this morning for every soul, every man, every woman in this house that has not been baptized in the Holy Ghost, oh God, that you send the fire of the Holy Ghost over their life, oh God. They need that power, oh God, to go to the next level in their life. They need that power to go to the next level in you, oh God. I pray in the name of Jesus, oh God, that you heal, you, you bring it upon them, oh God. Bring it on them, oh God. Let them, oh God, have the evidence for themselves, not for me, oh God, not for the neighbor, not for the next person, but that evidence for themselves, oh God, as they receive the Holy Ghost, they speak in other tongues, and they can say, glory to the great I am, I heard from heaven. I spoke in heavenly language, because God touched me. And I pray this morning, oh God, for those who already have it, but I think, oh God, we need a refilling of your Holy Ghost one more time. We need to be refilled over and over again. We need a new anointing for this day. We need a refresh move of your Holy Spirit, oh God. We need, oh God, to have the reverence of your holy name, oh God. Father God, baptize us one more time, oh Lord God. Refill our cups, oh Lord God, this morning with your Holy Ghost power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.